This is an oat milk uh, cappuccino. It's in San Francisco, south of Market Street, blue bottle coffee. It's the hippest place you can be. It actually goes, goes really well, goes really well uh, with an avocado toast, a poached egg, and some bacon. This is what entrepreneurs, what winners have for breakfast if they go for fundraising to Sand Hill Road. The top of the pop, um, driving down California to Menlo Park, Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, all the big firms are there. And building a company from scratch, uh, from the earliest things, that's what thousands of people strive to do and um, yeah, create returns. But the journey, it's a quite a bumpy road. It's not as, uh, not as direct. You start small with your friends. You maybe hire the first people. Then, at some point, uh, you also realize you need some capital to get investors to grow faster, to go to different markets. And um, I've done this. Over the past seven years, I've been there, the top of the pop, built a database from scratch, won the TechCrunch Disrupt uh, Award in San Francisco, been named by the Forbes magazine as one of the rising Internet of Things companies, and spent around $30 million building a distributed database. Still, end of 2020, I'm sitting there on top of that hill. I had all of this. I was crying. I was somehow, it didn't feel well. Something, something was missing. The compromises I had to make, the direction I had to go, and maybe or perhaps some of you or most of you also had that feeling about why I'm doing this, uh, what is the purpose of that, does it make sense to go more for this growth thing, or life is too short to do. I mean, this is not completely off, it's totally fine and many people do this, and it's also fine if people continue that way and they have to. But that was not, the right, was not the right thing for me. And I decided to leave uh, that circus and move on to new things. So after seven years to find my purpose, to also, I read really before that a lot about that purpose shit and yeah, well, why are you doing this in Generation Z and why? But actually, it's true. It's, um, yeah, it was a really hard step just to get out all of that because giving up something, that's always difficult. I spent many hours in nature. I did a lot of ski touring. I did hiking, biking. In total, I made like 135,000 meters in altitude in that, in that year. It's quite a, quite a lot. But um, I also spent a lot of time in the forests with the 80-year-old dad of my friend, um, planting trees, uh, but also cutting down some trees. Uh, spent a lot of time in the nature. And also took my time to reflect. It might be clear for you what to do and why are you doing things. For me, it took a long time. And it was not easy. It took a full, it took a full year. I didn't really know what the result was, what was coming out. I've also worked in a professional way with my coaches. Actually, I'm doing this since many years and I encourage you to do this, to, to reflect on these things. But steadily and slower, it became clearer and clearer. What I'm coming from, what I'm doing, nature, it has something to do with, with, with nature. And I was thinking about not just what I'm going to do, but why I'm doing it and also how I'm going to do it. And the how, I think that's very important because the path is also a very, very important part of the journey. It's not only about the goal or what you do, but how you do it. And if I put my values and my beliefs, uh, and they have been hidden somewhere, or they have been shaded by a lot of other influences uh, over the past seven years, I really thought about how I'm going to do that. And um, it's about leading the way, sense things that are not so easy to see, pick up initiatives, and fuel excitement to follow them, make them lively, nudge people, and also force them out of comfort zone now and then, including myself. But all of that being transparent and clear. Hierarchies are not necessary to do so. Trust, a fundamental thing. It's, uh, you have to engender it. You have to encourage people to have more and more trust. Um, and assume everybody is the best at their jobs even if they fail now and then. 
because without respect and without fundamental trust, an organization won't never thrive. Live your authentic self and develop yourself in an agile manner over and over again. Invent yourself. I grew my beard, for example. I had no one before. My hair got longer. <laughs> uh, but all of that while staying grounded, stay on, the, stay on the ground. Diversity and tolerance, they are attracting creativity, and with that creativity, you're getting more and more innovation. Be smart. It's really about looking at things in new ways. Forget about the stuff that was before. Question existing assumptions. See the uh, inconceivable, the big picture, and also take care of the small details while the things you're doing. Oops. No. Strive for a genuine success. Success is essential because if you're not successful, you're not going to have fun and you're not going to move forward. But it's not about beating others. It's really about uh, being, uh, being the best or being better, crafting better solutions to create a dent in the universe. Um, okay. And last but not least, live basic, unruly optimism uh, and unconditional love. Because impossible is a good way to start and assume out. We can assume, we can figure it out some way. Um, and live full of joy and with a good, hum good portion of humor. Because it really feels good to be nuts now and then. So um, what I'm going to do, and that was also the decision to think, what can I pass on my kids? What are the things that, that matter? And it became clear to me, climate change is definitely one of the biggest challenges that we have ahead of us. And I can do quite some things, and I'm doing this. Uh, eat less meat, fly less, uh, drive with electric car, drive less, uh, use green energy, re reduce consumption of things. This is a good start, and I encourage you to start with that, and everybody should do this. But that's not the entrepreneur. This is not like going to the top of the pop and also having a big impact on the, uh, on, in the universe. It's really, I see a lot of opportunity in there. We need capitalism to find this. We need millions of dollars to move that. And we also have to uh, have impact to build something scalable in that space and also help large businesses to, to change. Time is running. We're soon out of time. And also there are big changes ahead of us with some tipping points. If they happen, we won't be able to revoke it. It's the ice sheets, uh, Greenland, the Arctic ice sheets, Antarctica, but also the Atlantic circulation, the Gulf Stream that is powering a lot of our nature. It's in slowdown since the 1950s. Permafrost uh, is per potentially thawing. Coral leaves are, drying, uh, are dying. And also the rainforests but also the boreal forests, our forests, they are endangered. If you look at the science and you see that Europe forests, they have a huge potential. Right now, they are accounting for around 7% of the emissions of European countries. This could be risen by additional 5% uh, to, to reduce the, the carbon offset. Um, but if you look at, Euro at Germany's forests, for example, 5% of the forests died over the past three years. 5%. In some areas, 30% of the forests died because of bark beetle, because of, of storms, of other stuff. And there in Europe, we have 16 million landowners. And you guess, uh, it's an important thing. Forest is a valuable thing. But for example, Dornbirn, around 2,000 2, forest owners, and they even don't know where their forest is. They've never been to their forest. They uh, even, they maybe inherited it. Uh, there are some large forests, they take care of it. And the uh, forester, he's an unsung hero. They do this for a long time and not for a lot of uh, money is not, is, is really a problem in the forests. If you take to in, into account the timber prices that arrive at the forest owners, not the stuff that you, not the, price you pay for a cross laminated timber that has been shot through the roof. But what is really in the forest, it's been going down and down if you take uh, inflation into account and also the rising labor costs. On the other hand, 
there's also the possibility of, uh, of carbon certificates. There are around 10,000 companies in Europe that are regulated and are forced to buy carbon certificates. Uh, but there's also a raising number of companies that do this out of corporate social responsibility. They do voluntary offsetting. We are targeting, uh, we are targeting voluntary offsetting. And that's why I created the company Treely. And it's about, I had a dream to somehow direct, unite the 16 million forest owners to improve their forests, to have more carbon stored there and pull in one direction, step by step. Forest has a lot of function and in the first step we are taking care about the managed forest, the forests that have a professional forest management. In the first step we are using uh, high technology, uh, laser readings, but also satellite imagery where we uh, train machine learning models to calculate the amount of carbon stored in these, in these forests. In the second step, we calculate the optimal density for the forest. It's so-called stock stand, how many square cubic meters per hectare of forest is good, uh, good for one region. To do this, we use scientific, scientific approaches based out of ATH Zurich and other institutes. The forest owner makes a commitment to preserve the forest for depending on the previous calculated data, it might be to build up biomass or to preserve it and manage it in a climate optimi optim optimized way. Because our forests have to change over the next uh, couple of years and if we are not fast enough, they are also going to die like many forests in, in Germany. Um, and uh, we also take care of the cumbersome job to create carbon certificates, to get it certified by third-party auditing and also generate carbon credits for the voluntary carbon market. We are selling them on behalf of the forest, on behalf of the forest owners. So I spare you the whole nitty-gritty details about certification standards, the discussion about additionality, permanence, leakage, risk pool for calamities, double counting, science-based targets, just to name a few. Uh, we've, just, we've just started, but it's a long way to go. But this is where I'm coming from. This is the meadow in the front of my parents' garden in the Brengtsawald Mountains. And um, I could have known earlier that is an important part of the, of the journey. I encourage all of you to find your purpose because fulfillment and also success will follow. I have to practice what I preach and I've shouted into the forest. And I hope maybe in 10 years I'm back on stage again and I can tell what the impact was that I made in the small land in the universe and in Europe's forest. Thank you. <laughs>